Hey folks, welcome back to our Algebra 2 series. Today we're looking at cubic trinomials, and in this case we're going to factor some special cubic trinomials. And it doesn't matter whether this is in the form to factor or if it's in equation form. In either case, you should be able to factor these trinomials. And we're, under, we're working under the premise that if a cubic trinomial is factorable, then it's factorable under some special circumstances. And I'd like to show those to you today. The first step we're going to do here is to rewrite our cubic trinomial with the 3x squared here. We're going to put a couple of blanks in and then the minus 1. And the idea is that when we break apart this minus 2x squared into two parts, that we're going to be searching for, either on the left side or the right side of the second step, a difference of squares. So I'd like to show that to you. Well, let's just say, for example, that we wanted to break this minus 2x squared into two different terms, as you see here. That would probably be a very elementary guess. And it looks, at first glance, like we have a difference of squares. But indeed, we actually don't. This is a sum of squares if we factor out that negative, and that's not factorable. So in this case, we would not want to try that as our first example. Instead, we'd want to try a positive x squared. And then that would make the other term, though, a minus 3x squared, because remember, we have to make those two terms add up to the negative 2x squared that you see above. Well, now we do have a, a difference of squares in the second step. Let's see if this works out for us. This is x minus 1 times x plus 1. And this first term, the two parts, factor out the common term 3x squared. And that gives us x minus 1. Now, here we are with a problem that began with three terms added and subtracted, and now we only have two terms. In the first term, we have a common value with the second term, x minus 1. We'll factor that out front, leaving us with 3x squared plus this remaining term over here, x plus 1. Now, just to point out that we do need to inspect this trinomial to see if it is factorable, but in this case it is not. Pretty clear to see that. Let's move on to example number two. In example number two, we see that the x is to the first power, so that when we write 2x cubed and we break apart our 7x, it's going to have to go um, into two parts such that the difference of squares is now going to be on the left side. So I want to break this apart, but I also notice that there's a 2 in front of this x cubed. And if I'm going to have a difference of squares, that 2 is definitely going to get in the way. So whatever we choose for this value here next to the 2x cubed, it has to be twice as big as a perfect square. So in the case of x squared minus 1, I would want to put a 2x there. In the case of x squared minus 4, I'd want to put an 8x there. So I notice that 8x is a little closer to 7, so I'm going to go ahead and try with the 8x here. You can almost mentally try these. If that's the case, then I have to add back 1x in order to get the 7 in the, in the first step, or in the original problem. Let's work this one more step. Factoring out the 2x gives us x squared minus 4, and there's our difference of squares, plus x plus 2. I'm going to write that in parentheses just for clarity. 2x, x minus 2, and then an x plus 2 plus x plus 2. Now let's all be clear on the idea that there are two terms here. There's the first term, there's the second term. This is like a massive binomial. And in there, I have my common values of x plus 2. So they'll be factored out, x plus 2. And what's left over is 2x times x minus 2 as a quantity. And then plus 1, there's that relic left from the fact that we factored out the x plus uh, 2 there. As we work this one more step, we get x plus 2. We get 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. And again, we inspect that trinomial. In this case, the trinomial does not factor. So that one had a difference of squares on the left side, and that was all because the x was to the first power. Going on to the third problem, this one we have a very large number in the middle. 
And so when we have x cubed and we're trying to break the 171 apart, we use the 26 to help us out here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We know that 26 is 2 times 13, but we also notice that 13 squared is 169, and that number is very close to 171. Since we're trying to get a difference of squares on the left, because this x is to the first power, we're going to write minus 169x. So that's a very large number there, but again, it was made that way because of the 171, minus 2x. And notice that even the 2 comes into play here. As we factor out our x, we get x squared minus 169. We factor out the 2, and that gives us x plus 13. So you see that both of these numbers kind of helped us a little bit in that we used them throughout the problem. At this point, you've probably figured out the next few steps, but I'll go ahead and finish this for you anyway. In the first part, we're going to factor as a difference of squares and then note which term we're going to factor out here. Um, also, it's important to use parentheses so we get the right factor. Sometimes if you make a sign error, you can accidentally have a minus in there, and then you'd pull the wrong one out. In this case, we want to pull the proper value out, which is x plus 13, leaving us with x times x minus 13. And if you want, you could multiply those here and then put them in there. If you want to go one step faster, I like to bring every step in when I'm doing it on this uh, video, so we can all see what's happening. Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute, so x squared minus 13x minus 2. Now in all three of these examples, our trinomial did not factor. However, it's important to note that oftentimes this trinomial will be factorable. I hope that's helpful for you. Um, I will do another session of this with a little harder examples, but these are some basic ones that you might come across. Cubic trinomials.